Welcome to the show. It's Chris Graham joined by Rod Mullins. We're going to talk about uh, what happened at Darlington yesterday. And of course, the win goes to William Byron. But Rod, I think we have to start a few laps before the overtime win by Byron. And what happened between Ross Chastain and Kyle Larson? Boy, these are two guys who've who've swapped paint some this year. Uh, What happened there? And uh, uh, what's some of the fallout from that? Well, what happened there was simply somebody getting a little bit too anxious to make something happen in the closing laps uh, with Ross Chastain, primarily. Um, I can't say that uh, Kyle Larson is entirely innocent out of this whole thing because, you know, he could have let off after he collected Ross Chastain there and he kind of pushed him along the track there for a little while. But, um, you know, from my standpoint, um, I think the racing, he got a little bit too aggressive and, um, now I'm looking at it from another perspective and I'm saying Ross Chastain needs to be at least set down and counseled with, or at least they need to do something that, oh gosh, drivers were calling for almost immediately, uh, here 20, 30 years ago when Ernie Irvin was causing so much trouble on the track and wrecking people left and right. Um, I think Chastain needs to be calmed down a little bit more and I can't blame him. I have to say this again. I can't blame him for racing hard. That's what he's paid to do. That's what he is supposed to go out there and do. But, um, I think when you're wrecking people and you just blatantly outright do it, um, I don't know if he's thinking by some reason he's the second coming of Dale Earnhardt. I don't know what it is, but he, he definitely did not impress me in the race yesterday. And, uh, you know, that was Kyle Larson's race to win. Ross Chastain had a chance to maybe pass him, but he didn't do it in the right way. I just think, and especially at Darlington, you're going to have that kind of mess. Yeah. Chastain said after the race, I'm looking at the quote here. I wanted to squeeze him. I wanted to push him up. I wanted to push yep. him up for sure. And then, uh, you know, that's the, but it's the third time this year, uh, you know, uh, Larson's crew chief, Cliff Daniels said that's a three time, that's three races this year he's taken us out of. Um, I thought it was interesting that William Byron said after the race uh, that he, you know, at the restart there, six laps ago when they restarted, you know, we talked about it on the radio. <laughs> I didn't think they would wreck, but obviously it happened. We rolled on by. So he was kind of like, laying up a little bit no, thinking that there might be a possibility those two guys will get into a tussle yeah and i you know i kind of expected it but i think cooler heads prevailed but um i think when you have a car owner like rick hendrick and jeff gordon sit down in the follow-up press conference after the the race and then i hear rick hendrick come right out and say yeah we drive chevrolets they do too and I've told Chevrolet before, this is Rick Hendrick talking. He says, I, you know, we drive Chevrolets and I've told Chevrolet, if I wreck him, I'm going to wreck him. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not losing anything out of this is what's going to happen. And, um, I, you know, he's kind of like silent behind the scenes. Hendrick is, you know, Hendrick kind of lets the operation go to Jeff Gordon and he lets him, you know, kind of run the operations of it. But I think this was one of those things we didn't want to hear from Jeff Gordon this time around. I think it was probably the best thing coming from Rick Hendrick for him to say, uh, you know, if you do this again, we're just going to flat out, we're going to wreck you. We're going to fight you. We're going to do something uh, that makes you remember us because you're not going to push this over on us again. Chase Elliott came in third. Kevin Harvick was second, but Chase Elliott was in third, his best finish since he, uh, Broke his leg snowboarding. So a uh, good run for Elliott uh, on Sunday. Yeah, I think he did. I think he did uh, exactly what he needed to do. And that was stay out of trouble. Uh, he did get uh, in the caught up in one of uh, the melees that happened during Darlington, but he managed to uh, snap back and get back into it. But uh, yeah, it was a good run for him. Uh, he came out well. Brad Keselowski came out well again also, so things are looking up for that uh, uh, Roush Fenway Keselowski team a little bit more. Um, I think, uh, you know, you got to talk about Bubba Wallace too. Bubba Wallace uh, 
was running well there, I think, uh, early on. So was Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex led at least, I'm th- trying to remember, 131 of 132 laps early on in the beginning of this race. And then he got caught up in another melee. But um, Bubba Wallace um, definitely is going to have to take some kind of, um, how can I say this, some kind of PR class or something on how to talk to the media after the race. Uh, you know, he wants to say flat out, he wants to say the word and I'm going to say it here. I know we're, we're, we try to be a family program, but when, uh, he just says bull crap, he might as well just come right out and say it. I, I guess he's afraid NASCAR is going to go and censor him or NASCAR is going to hit him with a fine out of that, but he's not saying anything any different than what some of the other drivers haven't, you know, already in the past, but, um, you know, I think he, he quickly kind of put some blame on some people for the way that things happened the way they did on Sunday. And I think he was a little bit unjust in that. Uh, but he did have a good run going up until the, uh, the final stage of the race. And then it seemed like everything just broke apart for a lot of people out there. Even Ryan Newman, who was making a return to the, uh, to the track at Darlington, especially for Rick Ware racing. And, uh, he gets spun around, he spins around. I think he hits the wall and brings out a caution, but he did not have a very memorable day whatsoever for the uh, Rick Ware racing team. So getting back to Chastain, uh, so he, he knocks, uh, himself and Larson out of the race at the end. He also, you mentioned that, that dust stuff that, uh, Truex got caught up in. He was leading. You, you mentioned 132 of the 131 of the uh, first 132 laps. Uh, he was at 141 of 145 before Chastain knocked him, right. <laughs> knocked him out of the lead at least. Right. Um, yep. What is, you know, so you mentioned, I mean, gosh, I got to sit down and talk to him when, when they sit down and talk to him, I mean, you know, the, the guy races the way he races. Like you, you, I think you said this too. I mean, he's racing hard. That's kind of what to get paid for. So, how can that conversation work uh, to get him to to lay off a little bit? Because that's just his style. Well, uh, you know, the best way I can kind of describe it is what happened with Ernie Irvin, and that was Richard Petty, uh, some of the older bunch that came around that was still at one point either driving or was uh, still involved in the sport some way, sat down with him and said, you're going to have to change. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the way you drive. You're a great driver and so forth, but you're going to have to use a little bit of finesse. I think Dale Earnhardt was even in on this uh, particular conversation they had with Ernie Irvin and Irvin uh, had kind of developed his own racing style, but he also modeled it after Dale Earnhardt. Um, you know, you're kind of brought up around it. You're kind of in the Charlotte mode after coming from California and you're racing uh, you know, you kind of hear that from the man himself and he kind of sets it straight. And I don't know what actually transpired between, uh, Richard Petty. I'm sure Richard Petty was probably, you know, in his Southern draw, he was saying, you can't do that. You can't do things like that. Dale Earnhardt probably could have been, uh, I would, I would subject, or I would uh, guess, I should say that, uh, that he was subjected to some really a course language during the whole course of that conversation. And, uh, I'm sure that's what Chastain's going to be getting. He's going to be getting some course language from some of the drivers that are going to sit down with him and they're going to say, this is my bone. I've got to pick with you. Uh, this is what you're not doing. Right. There's nothing wrong with racing people hard, you know, beating them, banging and things like that. But when you go and you make a move like that to go and put somebody deliberately into the wall and you just, oh, I just wanted to push him up a little bit. Yeah. You don't have much real estate when you're at Darlington. That's not a whole lot of real estate to go with. Uh, I think he could have made a better decision as to where he was going to put him up, you know, squeeze him out a little bit more, but, uh, Chastain is right now, uh, Chastain is his worst enemy. And I think that what he is trying to do is he's trying to impress people and he's trying to go out there and, and it's almost as though he's trying to pretend it's, it's the second coming of Dale Earnhardt. He's not even in the same league. He's not even wearing the same shoe size right now to Dale Earnhardt in this kind of, in this kind of situation couple bits of off the track news alex bowman was at darlington yesterday but he wasn't racing of course he's been out for a few weeks he had that short track accident last month 
And the news is he's unsure when he'll be able to return. Yeah, he's hoping to be able to return to the all-star race. It's coming up this weekend at North Wilkesboro. And that's what he's hoping for. But I don't know. I don't know if the doctor is going to give him that go ahead right now or not. Um, that just remains to be seen with Alex Bowman as to, as to what the situation is going to be coming up. Um, he'd like to get back. Like I said, at North Wilkesboro, if, if not North Wilkesboro for the all-star race, Josh Berry can sub for him, but he has to race his way into the all-star race. Uh, I'd say he'd like to get back, but of all things, you're going to the 600 and you're going to one of the most physically demanding races that is going to be out there on the, on the circuit. And here you are with a back injury and, you know, one of your vertebra, and you're going to try to attempt the 600 more power to you. I just hope you've got plenty of, uh, pain meds or whatever. It's going to make you into, uh, keeping you, uh, level headed during this entire race, or you better have a sub driver ready to uh, step in and, and race for you during that race, because I don't think that's a good choice to be going back to, to racing if he is clear going back at the 600 i think he he needs to wait at least a couple more weeks if that's the call from the doctors another uh driver who was at darlington uh yesterday who uh we haven't heard from in a while uh and there's some maybe some good news kurt bush says he's feeling much better and he's thinking he might be able to come back sometime i'm not sure he hasn't given a timeline either but it sounds sounds a lot more positive than we've been thinking yeah, it does. It sounds a lot more promising than it did. Uh, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty there coming into the beginning of the season. And he was, you know, he was telling people, he said, uh, I really don't know when I'm going to get back. I'm just going to take my time and I'm going to see what it's going to take for me to get myself back into this. Uh, you know, he's got some, he's got some other issues that are going on as well. Some personal issues as well. That's uh, sort of on the, uh, the back burner in one way, if you look at it, but the most important thing to him right now is he's wanting to get back in the seat and drive some, but you know, it's got to be that doctor, that doctor has got to clear him for it and he's got to be feeling good. And when he said, I'm feeling good, um, that kind of gave me the indication. I think he's starting to get it together, but ultimately the doctors are going to have the final say. Next two weekends in NASCAR are some big weekends. Uh, you mentioned the all-star race this coming weekend at North Wilkesboro. And then of course, um, the 28th Memorial day weekend, uh, at Charlotte. Um, let's get to, you know, looking at North Wilkesboro this weekend, what can we look for? Well, North Wilkesboro is going to be the, uh, I guess the, uh, the surprise, this is the track that, you know, I guess at one time, a lot of people thought Bruton Smith, this was the track that you killed along with Rockingham when they took them off the schedule and North Wilkesboro had fell into a state of disrepair. I mean, it was in bad shape. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Even uh, went as far as to go and organize a campaign to where they could go and pull the weeds, clean it up, try to get it in some kind of shape and everything. And Marcus Smith, who's Bruton Smith's son and the uh, eventual, he's the chairman of the board with Speedway Motorsports he kind of took notice as the way that this track was like begging almost to be called back to a certain degree. And it's almost like a, a religious reawakening. This track, it, you know, was synonymous with the original uh, NASCAR schedule, the way that some of the races used to be in the day uh, now has been breathe. It's, you know, breathing back to life is what it's doing. Thanks to, uh, gosh, what is it? 116 million or something like that. I forget the, the price tag. Exactly. I know Kyle Bush is not happy. He's not happy. Well, of course, Kyle Bush is hardly <laughs> happy with anything though, but you know, he said, uh, I think it's an enormous waste of $116 million on a track. That's a has been sort of is the way he's kind of referring to it. I think it's an experiment. I think it's almost to the point of NASCAR trying to recover and get back to their roots and We've been wanting a short track all-star race. We had one at Bristol during the pandemic. And I think that it was just inevitable. It was going to come back either to one of the old tracks. And sure enough, North Wilkesboro was the one that they surprised us with, uh, with the announcement. They're going to have the all-star race there. And I think it's 
phenomenal. I would love to have a chance to be able to cover that race, but limited, very limited seating for not only just the media that's going to be able to be there, uh, but it's going to be for the crowd too. There's not going to be a very uh, big crowd uh, because the the track is kind of back to the original form that it was. And it's a, it's a sightseeing sort of thing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring it up to my wife. If, if we decide to go just a little bit toward Eastern shore, of Virginia, I wouldn't care to dip down just a little bit into North Wilkesboro, just go down through North Carolina and go by that track and see what they've transformed it into, because they say it's nothing short of remarkable. Well, you, you helped get us ready for next weekend. We got a couple of big weekends coming up on the NASCAR circuit. Rod Mullins, as always, thank you for your time and your insight. Thanks a lot, Chris. Maybe we can talk about next week too, a little bit more about the uh, NASCAR All-Star 75 that had been named, the 75 most influential yeah. drivers. Uh, a lot of controversy about that. We can talk about that also maybe next week leading up to the Coca-Cola 600 on Memorial Day weekend. And also this big deal that's happening right now with the uh, collective, I want to call it a collective bargaining agreement between NASCAR and the drivers themselves, the teams, it's uh, getting to the point where I think they're going to have to call for a, maybe some mediation with this because both groups don't see eye to eye exactly on some things. So maybe we can spend some time leading up to that next week. And before we talk about the 600 and the race on Memorial Day weekend, we'll put that on the agenda. No doubt. Sounds like a good, good plan there, Rod, as always. Uh, yeah. good, good insight. And uh, for our listeners out there, everyone have a great day. Appreciate it.